but out of context, weather anomalies. Like tornadoes in the winter, it's not common. Right? The areas where it's supposed to be hot is freezing. Hell storms. But y'all think it's common. It's not common. This time of year is giving you what we would call spring and fall time weather. And people think that it's normal to see it playing out the way that it's playing out. This shit is not normal. Right? They rain fish in Texas. There's blizzards in the northeast and in the northwest. It's a heat wave coming in, rolling in out the southwest. You got tropical storms coming out the southeast, conversion, all of that shit over here. And people got the audacity to say that nothing's happened. Well, at this particular point, I'm sitting back watching and I'm saying to myself, just to calm before the storm. I don't know what's going to be the uh, tipping point, but this is the calm before the storm because only thing we ain't took control of is media, right? So mainstream media is the last thing out of enemies to go. So whoever it is working for our side should probably be trying to shut that shit down, right? Because once they shut down, shut down the fake media, there's nobody to keep up the charade. That's snatching the curtain off their ass. Right? So, like, I can't tell a motherfucker um, when shit gonna happen. I done said that a million times. I can read it in real time as it's happening. And I can give a reasonable assumption of what this add, add up to in a mathematical sense. That's not prophecy. That's not giving prophecy. That don't mean I got to always be right. And that's where motherfuckers make their mistake. They think that if any motherfucker say something, he got to automatically be right. I can be wrong too. I don't got to always be right. But the fact that whether I'm wrong or whether I'm right, I stand on my motherfucking convictions. My mama said, let your yes be yes and let your no's be no. So if a motherfucker don't understand what that means, then that's their problem, not man. Right. So um, I've been trying to figure out like what else to tell these people. What else can I tell them to do? Once I done told y'all who the kings of the land was and y'all supposed to be pushing that agenda, but nobody's really only certain key people pushing the agenda. Everybody else sitting on the fence, twiddling their legs, you know, flipping their thumbs. Um, I've been laying low watching and I know something ain't right. I just don't know what it is. Something don't fit in the um, equation, right? The math is, is incongruent right now. So the only thing to do to make it more congruent and balance that shit out is to flip a bigger turnaround on the... Um, on the media, because they the ones keeping the charade going. They the ones broadcasting this bullshit from fake presidential Oval Office studios. Castle Rock, they got one on the military base. I was going over that with Rashida earlier. These motherfuckers keeping up this elaborate front. The only thing we ain't did was snatch the motherfucking curtains off the media. Get rid of them motherfuckers, take over their shit. Confiscate their shit for being the enemy to the people by feeding them the propaganda that lead them to participate in their own destruction. But y'all don't hear me, though. Y'all don't hear me. Because it's the media that's playing this song and dance, right? The artificial political elites. Where these motherfuckers really at? Right? So they telling us this shit, but something is something is amiss. 
I can't say exactly what it is right now, but this shit's supposed to been well on the road to recovery by now. And somebody ain't doing, somebody getting overzealous in their position and taking shit a little bit out of context, a little bit too far, right? So you got to know where to draw the line at, where you supposed to stop. Where's the finish line? Motherfucker can't keep moving the finish line because it's going to make motherfuckers say, wait a minute, why the finish line keep moving? Every time we we finished, then the finish line move again. That shit ain't fair. But they've been cheating the whole time. So why wouldn't this why would they be any of a less of a cheat now? Right? They've been cheating the whole time. Right? It's just that now you can't pull the same shit on our eyes. So now you have to keep as many of us, each one teach one from teaching another. Because the more of us to get the information out, the more we understand what we up against, the less jurisdictional authority these motherfuckers have to take us over. Right? So, um, if I don't speak to y'all one at a time, no, I appreciate y'all being here. I would like it better if y'all would bring more people. But hey, I ain't tripping because the shit gonna happen whether it's a little or a lot. I prefer to take a lot of us with us. I could have saved more people had they know they need saving, right? Had they know they were tricked, I could have helped them out of the deception, out of the trickery. But because they were so thoroughly tricked, they fought against everything that I say to break them free from the trickery, right? I got Clubhouse. I just haven't set up a room, right? So I'm, I don't really be... The thing is this. I could talk to y'all that blew in the face. It's not going to change nothing. It's not going to help nothing. The only thing going to change is if the people that I'm talking to is inspired to action from the words I speak. You know, if I get you to teach somebody the shit that I'm teaching you, showing you where to look for the information, here's the answers. You look right here. This is the answer to the problem, right? Some people are starting to understand what the problem is and see who the real enemy is, right? So I be putting them, I post that shit. I don't give a fuck. If I see somebody saying the same thing, I don't have to know them motherfuckers. They telling you the exact same thing I'm telling you. So if they telling it to you, I'm telling it to you, and we don't know each other, then it might be some validity to that shit, right? So first and foremost, the black term for the people is a chess term for the people. All of the people considered as black is the pawns on the defensive side of the chessboard, and all the people who considered white is the pawns on the offensive side of the chessboard. On the defensive side of the chessboard, you don't even have to know that you're under attack. The defensive side of the chessboard consists of the indigenous people of the land. The deception being used to prevent them from ever participating in the chess game is to make them believe that they don't even have positions on the chessboard. When the real reality of it is, is they own the chessboard, right? Not only do they own the chessboard, they invented the game. Once you realize you invented the game, you got to realize that the inventor of the game can't be beat using that game. Right? So he can come in late. He can come in in an off position. He can come in at a bishop's angle or at a knight's L. Or he can slide across on the rook. Or he can push in any direction off a of queen. But whatever it boils down to, when it's, when it comes to the grand hurrah, checkmate, motherfucker, the gig is up. You have to know when you playing against them, and you got to know what they're using as a strategy to use to keep you in a subservient condition. Now, the chains are paper chains. The paper chains are the adhesion contracts. So look up adhesion contracts, right? Every time you do paperwork in with the corporation, you are agreeing to follow the rules of the corporation. The corporation is not 
the government. The government is the people that the people pick from among themselves to be their leaders. Not the artificial electoral college puppy dog show that they tell y'all is the president who is actually the elected CEO of the corporation by stakeholders. If you don't know what the uh, electoral college is, you won't never know how they was able to determine who was going to be the president from the word go. Because the electorate can override the popular vote. But if they want you to think whatever they want you to think, right, then they can tell you that the popular vote is what the electors was going to do anyway. You have no way of verifying that, right? There's no agency that verifies ballots specifically should be done on its own in a, in a society where you your votes count, right? So automatically, at the, if you was a real, having real presidential elections, it would be an independent corporation, an independent body um, that would be tasked with inspecting the validity of all of the motherfucking ballots if it wasn't fixed. But it's fixed. So since it's fixed, they let the electors of the electoral college whose vote they know gonna, uh, who they know they're gonna vote for ahead of time, even before the election. Because part of being enrolled as an electorate in the electoral college is they have to know who you voting for. So that's how they know already who gonna win. Okay, so being separate from the corporation is taking away the artificial, what they call uh, the de facto jurisdiction, uh, which is actually an assumed jurisdiction acting under the color of law. Violation of the United States Code 1983. So um, when they acting under the color of state law, they pass and they soft self off with the appropriate jurisdictional appearance, but without the substance. So when you validate the illegitimate system, you telling them that you are imbecile in law and the imbecile in law is considered dead, AKA black, right? So you black in law, which means you the ones that they are attacking anyway. How do you know this? You, we've been at war for 500 years. Right. In the 500 year war, they have what they call warrants. A war rant is a declaration of war that is perpetual. Every time one of us color outside the lines they draw for us, they issue a warrant in our name. But they don't issue it in the name of what we call the du jour. They are issued in the name of the de facto corporate entity they create that represents you called a straw man. The straw man is what you call a um, legal fiction. That means it's created in law, but it's not real in substance. It is a de facto. The corporation known as the United States is a de facto. The people of the land in a sovereign capacity are the de jure. When you realize that you did de jure, then you got to know well, how is they playing this game that keeps us from winning? They use the paper trap to get you to consent to their superior jurisdiction. The paper trap determines your lack of competency to handle your own affairs because you keep re-enlisting in adhesion contract after adhesion contract with a defunct corporation. It's closed now. So now you beating the dead horse trying to get it to come back to life, looking for some shit they call normal. We ain't going back to that shit. Better get Sister Tracy. See what she got on her mind. Hey, Tracy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Must have been an accident.
Okay, so, yeah. So now, when you don't do the paperwork, they can't validate the substance of their claim of you being an imbecile in law because only an imbecile would, would surrender his inalienable rights for his civil liberties. Your inalienable rights override all of the civil liberties. The civil liberties are those uh, um, allowances that the corporation, the civic body, the corporation uh, acting under the pretense of government allow you to as a member of a corporation. Your membership is determined by you re recontracting with them again and again and again. And the more you recontract with them, filing nationality cards, driver's license, birth certificates, social security cards, you saying that they, the facto jurisdiction is more superior than your de jure jurisdiction when that's not possible, even according to their own law admission, right? Because they tell you in their law that sovereigns empower corporations to perform the functions of government. If the sovereign at any time realized that the corporation is random up, then the sovereign can withdraw his consent for the corporation to do business from his sovereign capacity as a five-fifth realized being and not a three-fifth Dred Scott compromised um, imbecile in law, right? So that's the name of the game and that's how it works. Once you know how it works, you can mount a defense against it. But if you don't know how you work, you can't defend against it. What we would be doing if everybody knew what was going on, we would all be walking off our jobs and shut the economy down, right? But it's going to shut down anyway. These banks have been bleeding us dry for too long. So they got, that's a wrap for them. They underline Big Mama Bank, under undermine Big Mama Bank, right? They couldn't keep it, but they could live off of it as long as they was holding it in trust for the rightful trustees to assert their superior jurisdiction in a de jure capacity as a sovereign being, right? And demand that the three kings be seen walking on the land as free men, right? So that we can restore the balance back and raise the matriarchy, right? So you need all four of them, the three kings as the uh, governors of the land, right? The one so declared to redeem them or to show the people where the real leaders on the land at and to tell the people who are, who we pick versus the corporate fiction in the artificial dog and pony show called elections. All elections are fixed. Rodrizzo's 06. Let's see what he's talking about. Come on in, my man. See what you can do. What's going on, God? What up, fam? What you, got on, it? you got it. What y'all up to over there? Man, oh, we man, cool, man. G, we uh I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to go live, fam, for the last couple of days. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out what's going on, man, because some shit don't look right to me. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, hey, hey, fam. I wanted to ask you a question, right? Sure. So you know, I'm, I'm from Chicago as well. Originally, I'm in Atlanta, though. In my whole my background, you know, we Mississippians, right? Yeah. I want you to explain the Mississippians more, if you could, fam. The Mississippians is one of the oldest tribes on the land. The Mississippians are what y'all call in modern gang terms, vice lords. Okay. We all vice lords descendants that broke us up in Chicago into left side was Peace Stone, right side was Disciple Nation. Right? Now, when the, the tribes got scattered, 
the Mississippians tasked by Big Mama to locate the tribe's people and start to reformulate the tribes. We have a language that's unique to the Mississippians and um, pretty common in a lot of the gang culture, right? So right. when we talk about the culture, when you hear us talking about us, we talking about, we doing this for the culture, right? Right. We doing this for the culture. It don't matter if you folks, it don't matter if you peace stone, it don't matter if you almighty. When you out okay. putting in work and you describe it to somebody that don't know what you're doing, you saying I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I gotta put in my work for the fam. I gotta do this for the culture. Right? right. So that's what we call earning our stripes, earning our worth. Can you get it from the fat of the land? Can you get along with a kinsman on the land, even if they're from a opposing tribe? Right? So now as part of my task, I had to walk with P-Stones as a GD without never dropping my flag. Right. Right. So so Angel Bay had me tested in Motown when I was staying on 50th in May. Right. Right. So I went and put in work, did dirt with a lot of P-Stones. But I still had my shit broke to the right. I respected them and they respected me. I've right. had clashes with Cobra Stones and um, Latin Kings right there on 50th in May, between 50th and 51st. From this, we was able to draw a, a treat, right? Agreement, like squash that bullshit, man. Our people was in a, in a crisis and we can't be out here going to war with each other. And they agreed and I agreed, so, you know, this was able to put us in a position where folks can talk to stones and stones can talk to folks in respect. Right. Right. So this is Mississippians way of putting the culture back together because Big Mama then turned us a loose on the land. Right. Right. So I had to go find who she sent before me to secure what part of the land and by what means. So the, the three biggest tribe, tribal leaders on the land is Stan Tukey Williams on the West Coast, right? He's what you call a double head chief. His right. actions in creating the Crips automatically created the Bloods as a default opposition in our community because the way we wired just because he big Tukey, some of us just not buying that big Tukey shit. Right. right? So now, Big Mama's uh, Peace Stone in Chicago, Angel Bay sends T. Roger to California when he realized that now we have a red lodge or a red mother line rising to oppose the father line with no structure. So when you go on the West Coast, you got to study T. Rogers and that's what, uh, peace yeah. zone connection to the bloods. That's when T. Rogers went out there. Yeah. Right. Now, he, remember, he a bishop. So he moving at an angle. Right. Right. And Angel Bay is the chief rook, the L rookie. He moved straight side to side, front and back. He don't bullshit. No bullshit nowhere. Right. Right. We go. So now they putting us on the chessboard and they capturing the kings, so to speak. The only way for the kings to get out is for one of the knights to rise to the position to put their king in check and to flip their queen out. Right. Right. So when we figure out that they look like us, but they not us. Right. Now this ties all of the clans back together and then it, under, it brings the unity key into play. Right. Right. So now we got to talk about vice lords. Right. My mama was the original queen, the queen of the vice lord nation when they was bikers before they ever became incorporated. Right. Right. They was called they was called outlaw vice lord bikers and they was uh, stationed on the west side of Chicago. Right. My father, they call him Big Fork. We 
we all know the fork is blue lives, Poseidon, water sign, right? Right. And so when they got married, they had to divide the children up, red lives, blue lives, red lives, blue lives, like that. Well, right. Because I had two brothers before me that passed, it concealed the seven, the seventh child, G is the seventh letter made, in the fifth position. So the reverse of that is to conceal the P stone under the six. Right. So this is why Larry, ambassador to stone, went to King David. Right. King David, so we in turn, bless him. Stone. Right. So King David in turn blesses Larry, king king with him. Right. Right. So now he got a king, prince and Larry got a prince. And there's two kings running the disciple nation. Cohen right. Pro assassinate King David and say some old bullshit. He died from kidney failure or some shit, but they murdered him with a hot shot. We all know what's going on with the hot shot. We from the land. We know what they do with that. Right. right. That's how they get rid of us when they want to accuse us of nefarious endings. Right. Right. So when the Mississippians get the order from Big Mama, in this case, my Big Mama was Mother Margaret. Mother right. Margaret came out of New Orleans, the Cajun queen, and became the dark mother, queen of queens, of the Mississippian lodges or families. Mm -hmm. Now, she sent her boys ahead of me to go settle the land. Larry is, was an ambassador. You got to remember that because he is the statesman, makes him the spokesman for Big Mama. Right. Right? Now, the problem is somebody came in and turned Big Mama kids against each other at an early age. But the ones they couldn't turn against each other couldn't understand what's going on on the land because we have a government involvement to take the leadership off the land. Right. Right. So Larry ain't never had no beef with Jeff. They never had no personal beef with each other. Right. The only time where they ever went anything, they went their separate ways is when Larry went, uh, flipped from Ambassador to Stone, Main 21. Then he left it as 20 mo. Right. So when the when stones depart now, it's 20 mo because there's one missing. Right. On the 21 mm -hmm. brick pyramid, the cold brick, the block of ice, the scorpion king. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. That would go over a lot of folks' heads, but not ours. I, I get exactly where you're coming from, fam. You from the land. You already know. I don't have to, like, a lot of people that ain't from the land or just, just not starting to remember can't keep up, but you already there. And my man back right. here, there too. Right, right. You know, you know, it's crazy, fam. When I first, when I first ran across you and shit, I ran across you on ISIS joint, right? Yeah. So when I was hearing you break it down, right, I'm thinking, you know, from knowing our 720, like, damn, folks got to be on some. You feel me? Because, you know, you know what we know, you know, that 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 our 720 comes from somewhere that's, you know, and it was just crazy, fam. But I really appreciate what you're doing, man. You know, I, I'm I'm tuning in a lot of the guys to what you want, man, and we definitely pushing the movement out here, famo. I believe you, sure. man. I can feel the energy shifting. It's just right now, like I say, I think just the calm before the storm, because when it hit, it's gonna hit, and they gonna see all of these right. people talking about Larry did with no evidence. You know what I mean? Right. Motherfucker saying Angel Bang gonna never see the streets again. Right. 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 Motherfuckers not even considering Tuki. He ain't even on nobody mind. He the shocker. Right. Right. You, you know what's crazy too, fam? I want to say like a couple days after the concert, I was listening to uh, I was listening to one of your recordings or whatnot. And I'm over here. I'm, I stay downtown in Atlanta. On the G, man, I seen uh little Larry, man, over right down the street. As I'm listening, 
to you. You feel me? And that was that was like a a, a straight up confirmed answer on what's going on. Because yeah. I'm gonna tell you, like, I actually, me and Cuzzo, we actually, you know, no ice is not all the way like that. But we didn't see her in the flesh, like. You know, we had been in the same groups as ISIS, you feel me? So, mm-hmm. man, as, man, you read this, you read this thing with me, fam. Basically, I can just say that, you feel me? And it's, it's hitting real hard, fam, oh. You get what I'm saying? Especially everything that I didn't put my life on the line with for this whole situation. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Riding with the nation, you know, just all type of, but I just know even though the brothers was on, you know, the wrong path at a certain point, I'm just glad to know that, you know, now that we on the right path, and I, I know it was for a bigger reason. Right. So even when people thought we was on the wrong path, this is what the options Angel Bay was given and the options Hooper was given. And so I'm just right. speaking Chicago because you know where we at. Right. So Angel Bay took out a commission and Larry took out a commission. While they out of commission, the government flood our community with drugs. Right. right. They didn't they didn't do it before they was out of commission. Right. They flooded our community once they got the leaders off the land. Right. Remember, around the same time they uh snatched Larry up, they murdered um Fred Hampton. Right. And, and Mark Clark. Right. right. Fred Hampton's mission was unifying all of the local clans. He was doing the same thing Angel Bay was doing, the same thing Larry was doing. Right. Right? Because Big Mama need us to get on our motherfucking dean so we can get our land back and oust these imposters. Right. Right? So when I follow the moves, I'm able to see stuff that other people can't see because like I tell motherfuckers, I wasn't just born. I was conjured up. Right. Gee. You know, so I came in 10 toes down, initiated. Right. 1110 is my birthday. Right. So Angel Bay's message to me in the circle seven, because I'm the seventh. Right. Um, on Folk on the Hustler, page four is a vice lord flip. Right. Then I find my birthday, the eleven ten. I read it backwards, and it's saying the angel came and took the key away. So I remember that the Moore Science Temple sued Larry, uh, uh, Jeff. Right. They, they left bumping hard in the government and the public domain. Right. Right. But they never said he was wrong. They just said they he don't teach what we teach. Right. Right? And and they won. So he they started calling themselves El Rookie. Right? Right. But they still follow something from Noble Ju Ali. Right? Noble Ju Ali was Cherokee High Chief. Right. That's one of the largest tribes on the land right so he said get a good moorish education right that means study the shit out of these motherfuckers until you can't study them no more till you run out right. of motherfucking right. shit to study about them and then he gave us some chapters to let us know what was going on one chapter right. is called misery right Another mm-hmm. chapter is called a religious controversy. Right. Right. And then he give us clues in the oral statements and prophecies. Oh, we know what the elephant means, but we don't remember that before they killed the buffalo off, they killed off the North American elephants, which still looked like woolly mammoths. Right. Right. But that was the symbol. Right. Because we said all three land masses, the Americas, Africa, and Asia, the right. matriarch symbol is the elephant. So he said, the elephant is our friend. Right. Now, 
he said that they was worried about the watchdog, but that watchdog was no watchdog at all but an elephant. The problem with the elephant is he never forgets. Right? Yeah, he did it right. Right. And the monkey came riding now in on the back of an elephant. Right. Oh, right. That son, that son Wukong coming through India as the Hanuman. Right? Landing in mm -hmm. the Southwest as the monkey king coming to get the Ten Buddha scrolls. The scrolls of right. wisdom. Right? So now you got mm -hmm. a giant monkey on the land in the south in the southwest and a giant thunderbird with the monkey the monkey is the symbol for thoughts he is the only one of the pantheon that identified with the human enough where he used the baboon as his secondary symbol right but they never brought up the gorilla right right so they had a, they had knowledge of every animal in Africa except the gorilla. Right. Why would they not why would they not bring that bring the gorilla up? Cuz the gorilla would have to be the last totem animal to rise to prominence. Mm -hmm. They can't use that totem cuz that totem's time hasn't come to rule. Planet of the Apes. Right. Right? Because in the ape family the gorilla is the king of the apes. Right. Right. The great primate. And the great primate is the one that's prime for mating. The alpha right. male. Right. And the alpha male comes in with the gorilla key. Right? Mm -hmm. The gorilla key comes from a gorilla knock, a raw motherfucker. And it's right. a game. Fisty cuffs. Chin check. Right? P Stone, G Kirk, General. Chin right. Check. Right? He took his motherfucking right motherfucking fist and knocked the shit out of my left jaw. Right. So oh, now gee. we got gorillas knocking, one red, one black. But he actually blew. Right. <laughs> right? And yeah. the blue gorilla came out his bag and they realized that gorillas knock back. Right. Right? So this is how we establish who is who on the land by the knock around game. Now, if you go back and look at Big Bull and Jeff, what was they doing? Any motherfucker, if you ain't down, nigga, let's scrap it out. Right. Right? Because what we trying to do is bigger than me or you. So we going to man to man, we going to put these hands up. Right. Right? And Big Bull was a scrapping motherfucker. For the peace stone. Right. right? But it ain't like Larry and them didn't have another motherfucker over there, too, because they had a blue bull. Right. That did the scrapping. So it, everybody had they 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 fisty cuffs on deck. Right? So what's the test of a man? What he gonna do when he get punched in the chin? He gonna either fold or fight. Right. Right? So this is all putting the whole structure back together the old country boy way. The country boys call mm -hmm. it knocking. Right? And we from Mississippi. We Mississippians. My father, right. father from, from um, Canton, Mississippi. My mama from Magnolia, Mississippi. My family from the Delta, Indianola. See? Yep. Your family right down there where my family at. Yep. Right? My mama left Mississippi, and then she got trained on her training ground in the ENO. That's where she bumped into my big mama. Okay. Right? This is where she learned about the kanji. But later on, she would convert to the church in order to conceal who we was. Right. Right? So <clears throat> she ended up moving from New Orleans to Chicago, where she meet my father. Right. You know, so then we put all this shit together. We end up coming down the line. I know who Big Mama want me to tell y'all. Angel Bay, red. Larry Hoover, blue. And the two-headed chief off the West Coast, right, is Angel Bay. I mean, is uh, Tukey Williams. Tukey, right. 
Let right. me, you know, I wanted to say this too before I forget, G, TP on that. You know, I know you were speaking on the Moors, right? Yeah. So, you know, I did some time in the feds, right? Yeah. And I, I can tell you one thing, bro. <laughs> I've seen so many brothers go in the feds because of that paperwork shit. It, it's, it's crazy. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, and it's so I I got homies that you know what I'm saying been to the feds, more is kicking all that woo woo. Next thing you know, trying to get a crib and all this. Next man, these brothers in the feds, bro. You know, and I always said it ain't. It's something ain't right about that shit. Like if if we ain't trying to be a part of a structure. Why are we filing certain paperwork to be a part of their structure? With them. Exactly. And, you know, they are saying, you know, the brothers, oh, no, nah, mo man, woo, 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 woo. But, you know, I always thought, like, why is it, it's a hundred of you brothers in here, and none of them ain't there because they on some other type. They own that paperwork. Yeah. They lost their whole lives. Twenty. 20, 10, 15 years. You know, they get big numbers for that shit, bro. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, what what they call that shit? Um, it's, it's a name they got for it when you be trying to do that paperwork. That's a constructive fraud. Right. Right. So the problem is, because I've been looking at the shit since 95. So I think I'm well versed in it enough to know what the problem with it is and why it would never work. The first right. problem with it is, is that you write if you the way that you argue in it, but you argue in it to the wrong motherfuckers. Right. Right? That's the problem. In a system, when you separate from a system, you become an enemy combatant. What most of us don't know is Supreme Court already ruled that the ones of us that look like us are classified as enemy combatants back in the 1800s. Right. Then they came with this COINTEL pro shit that also said that they, you know, this is how you get rid of these motherfuckers. This is this the problem. Why are we a problem? Right. right. We a problem because it's our shit and they don't ever want us to figure it out because we'll get together and tell them to get the fuck out. Exactly. Right. So it'll go back to what Pac said. We might fight amongst each other, but I promise you this, we'll burn this bitch down, get us pissed. Right. You know? Right. So and yeah, that that whole thing though, fam, like that paperwork shit, man. Like when you go to the feds and you see so many righteous brothers in there because they trying to file that crazy ass paperwork, man, and it seemed like all of them they just be looping around and they get the worst treatment. They get the diesel treatment. You feel me? Ain't anything go wrong. They just send them to another prison and be like, oh, yeah, because that sovereignty shit, you feel me? Like, it, it, it's all a game. You get what I'm saying? Like, I've been seen through it. So when you call it out, when you, because I, you, not too many brothers call it out. It's in this community that you can say, you feel me? But when you called it out, I was like, yeah, I definitely feel them on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you remember that movie uh, with Al Pacino and uh, uh, Keanu Reeves, Devil's Advocate, when he was the attorney, yep. right? Yep. So he's the motherfuckers you making deals with, Devil's Advocates. Right. They've been, the devil mean enemy. Take all that mystical ass bullshit out of it. That's all it mean is your enemy. Right. When Elijah Muhammad said the white man, the devil, he wasn't lying, but the white man ain't even white. Right. Right. Because right. if it was, he wouldn't have been able to infiltrate the nation of Islam. Right. And that's the first thing the Moors tell you that the white men ain't white. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they telling you who they is. They got to give you the opportunity to discover what the fuck they talking about. Right. And so when you when you when you said that it made all the sense in the world, fam, I'm like, damn. He breaking it down, you feel me? Right. Yeah. They came over here as black conquistadors. What do conquistador mean? 
Conquer. Two door. Okay. Quest. It's the conquest of the two doors. Who is the two doors? That's the black nobility of Europe. They telling mm -hmm. you who they is. You just can't follow the words back. If right. you don't follow the words back to where they came from, you can't trace the enemy back to where he came from. Right, right, <laughs> right. We, you know, we had our skirmishes with each other. Anybody tell y'all we didn't fight amongst each other? They tell you a goddamn lie. Right, but we didn't. We didn't kill each other like they do now. Right. If my son, your son, had a problem. We meet up in the motherfuckers in the in the town square and we make a circle and then they can scrap that shit out and when it's over with they shake hands like me and leave that motherfucking beef on the floor right right and that's what mm -hmm. what larry and jeff them was doing when it started if we remember right but they was also having breakfast programs educational programs lunch programs the shit that the government was supposed to be doing that they wasn't doing right right panthers got mm -hmm. ran out of Chicago that left the disciple nation, the vice lord nation, and the peace stone nation to take care of the community because it wasn't no motherfucking body else for us to turn to. Right. Right. Like a lot of people don't know that um King David rose to prominence protecting Jewish business owners from Italian mobsters. Mm. Right? And they right. gave they gave him a crest. The crest that they gave him gave him that motherfucking title of King David. Right. Right? Because he became the protectorate of people that was minding their own business. They didn't look like us, but they didn't treat us like the motherfuckers that claimed they was us and was doing dirt to us. Right. And they was using people that don't look like us to block the lodges. Right? So now we can't never get in there to see what's going on behind the curtain. Right. Because don't nobody that look like us have the opportunity to get through front door. Right. Our response to that was the Ellis Island immigration draw. Because they already got kicked out of Europe. Right. We need Europeans to tell us who these motherfuckers is. And they also using Europeans to keep us out of the lodges. So once right. we overrun the institutions, now we can slide people that look like them into the lodges without them ever being knowing that we got motherfuckers in there with them because they look like them. Just like y'all got motherfuckers that killed off all our leaders because they looked like us. Right. Right. So. Once that was done, now mm -hmm. they had to give us the information so that we know what's going on. Go back to the Peace Stones. The same motherfucking um, um, people that was um, bucking the system in the Catholic Church was giving motherfucking Angel Baynum um, safe haven in the church. Right? Remember um, was his name Father Sabina? He did a whole right. lot of his work in our community in the sixties and seventies, right? And he knew what was going on, right? That's why him and Farrakhan still jam to this day because the 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 pale skin put his head on the line for people that look like us, right? You know what I mean? So th they tried to run they scam on us, we call motherfuckers over here that already fought them and won. If they wouldn't have never won, they would have still been in Europe. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. That's how we end up having to make tribal alliances all across the land. Right? Okay. All of the elder women in the community know when one of us gonna be born and where we gonna be born at. There's certain ones of us that they know from past lives when we pass, they know when we coming back. When that energy gonna return that can develop the character of this individual. Right. Right? 
And that's how they know the same way that the, the lodges was tracking us across lifetimes without us knowing. That's what we discovered that they was using the um, the uh, um, astrology for as a navigator, navigating the returns of the chiefs of the land so that they can murder them, so that they can right. never reclaim the land. Right? They can't never reclaim the land if they ain't here. In right. Fact, so it got to keep falling into another king, to another king, to another king, to another king. Until they exhaust all of the ones on the land, and when the last one rise up, if he can't get the job done, then they all lose. Right. Right. What's the job? What's the what's the end game? Unify the clans on the land. Let them know that the motherfucking imposters look like us, but they don't vibe like us. If we follow how we feel, follow how we operate, and disregard how they operate. We will automatically be able to link up across barriers. Right. 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 Man, it's, well, you be dropping it, fam. Yeah, I got a question for you as well. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Let me jump on this. So, what, what do you uh think is like the um yeah, biggest issue big that we um have? Seen? Um, and pretty much like uniting, pretty much like uniting everybody. Or getting everybody onto this knowledge. Do you think it's like money? Do you think it's like education? Do you think we don't like like what do you think is really holding us aback? The Department of Education all across the land is the cause of the problem. It's where they misinform mm -hmm. the children on purpose to make them think wrong. So if you take a calculator, this came straight out of Dianetics, by the way, and it actually worked because I tried it. Take a calculator, press one number down and try to do a problem. It won't work. It will never give you the right answer, right? Mm -hmm. Why well, will never give you the right answer? Because by you holding that button down, it's always inputting the wrong information, right? So this is what they train in our brains, our children's brains to do, input the wrong information at all times. So when you try to put teaching right knowledge, right wisdom, right understanding, they have to overcome their understanding of the wrong knowledge, the wrong wisdom, and the wrong, all of that shit wrong. The miseducation of the Negro protocol. If you can put the chains around their brains, you don't have to put them around their ankles. Right? And the ones most rebellious that's most likely to break the chains from the brain, those are the ones that you put in physical chains. Right? So where we are now, you know what I'm saying? We need to be letting the word reach back to the land, all across the land. They coming. Right. Ain't no doubt about it. These motherfuckers coming and they're not happy. Because nobody could see that the enemy was masquerading as the righteous motherfuckers all the time. They was doing all the dirt and accusing the righteous motherfuckers so they can get away. Right. Called a scapegoat scenario. Right. So the start teaching right. children critical thinking and practical problem solving give them a great advantage because they took it out of the curriculum. It used to be automatic with the curriculum. Right now, if you want your child to have critical thinking, it's all separated. It used to be hardwired into math, science, and reading. It's not there no more. Mm -hmm. They have to take critical thinking, practical problem solving separate. Or you gotta teach them. Right. You know? And most of the children right now are born critical thinkers. They will call an adult on a bullshit in a heartbeat. For sure. I seen that shit all the time. Yeah. You know? And they don't have no um no reverence for the adult because the adults have failed the children for too many generations. Right. Right. So the only adults they're going to respect is the ones that can see from, from their level. Most adults think children are lesser than. How are you going to get a world to somebody lesser than? The children right. is than because they inherit the future. It's up to you to make sure they reach their potential as best right. you know how. Right? <clears throat> 
So right now, our biggest thing is, is we believe that this shit that we're going through is normal. And we believe that this bullshit called the United States ain't going to never come to an end. Right. Right. Soon as we realize this shit is over called the United States, that corporation is no longer um, operational. They've even taken the, the D.C. off of the map. Right. Right. All of well, since like 20, what, 2020, they did it in 2020 or was it 2019? They just did it a couple months ago. If you look up D.C. on Google or, uh, Earth right now, it's just going to say Washington. I was talking about the corporation. Oh, the corporation was over with when Trump, uh, when Biden supposed to took office. They took office into the dead corporation. Right. So I'm glad you got on. I wanted to ask you something because I seen you post this. And I've been following this situation for a while. How do you feel about that? The Judy, you, the Judy chick that be posting uh, about the intel. Wait a minute, what you talking about? The intel. I seen I seen you put clips up. It's like Judy, some the ink the Denar Chronicles, the um talking about um what was what's the the Dom, the Zim, the Denar. Oh, you talking about the economic system. You yeah, really with said. the currency and everything, yeah. Yeah, I don't really focus on the currency part. Because right, okay. I'm more focused on the part of the showing our true leaders, right? And putting them out in the front for the people to see this is some real deal shit. We was right. really we was really making connections behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? We was really putting our own shit back together. Right. right? And it's not going to make sense to most of our people and, until they see Larry and Jeff in the public eyesight. Right. When they see him in the public eyesight, it's going to have a holy shit effect. You know? That is real. And yeah, another other thing too I asked um, about, you know, about the education aspect is because uh, I'm uh, down here in Atlanta and um I'm working with some people and one of my uh, business partners, well, they all retire educators. So we work directly like with the King family and stuff like that. And um, a lot of different uh, mayors and stuff down here trying to basically um, get our school system kind of kicked off. And um, we've been working on for about six, seven years, but every time we were trying to basically kick everything off, we would kind of get shut down by like the, politicians and just different things like that because they were saying we were competing with school systems and stuff like that so it's pretty much like a kind of like a vocational aspect so basically where we would train basically a school to prison pipeline so one of the main things that we were doing was working with the judges and stuff like that Welcome, you all. <laughs> Happy win. Yay. Thank you so much for tuning in. And just on the slide, happy 45th, excuse me, happy 45th born day. Can I check it up? Happy 5th, 45th born day, you know, to our very own um, Kanye Yay. Wessa, uh, you know what I'm saying? We hope that you have a beautiful birthday, Kanye. Okay. Okay, and um, all y'all, and we salute Uncle Rod Hayes. We salute all y'all. Like I said, y'all don't never know who's watching, but I do, and sometimes I don't. But um, it doesn't matter. The, you know what I'm saying? We're making a lot of noise. We making so much noise. People waking up on the wrong side of their bed, y'all. They waking up angry. They just, I mean, they, they, I mean, angry. Okay, y'all. We got why we got to raise our frequency. Y'all got people waking up. You know what I'm saying? They getting on these screw tube platforms and stuff. 
angry. We making so much noise, y'all. And see, this is not even about screw tube, y'all. We got a bigger mission. We know lamestream media. You know what I'm saying? We're not worried about anything on a screw tube. And in the, in the, come on, y'all. We're going to rise, y'all. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So lower density frequencies, even on this platform, you got to pass it up. To use that shit, I guess. Watch it like a train wreck. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how y'all want. Don't watch it. I don't know. We already know how it goes up in here. We run this shit like a network, like ABC, CBC, D Disney, or whatever. Whatever the apps you clicking on all day watching that you choose to go click on and watch this and that over and over again. Don't come in this lying ass den with no motherfucking stupid ass questions. It, no question is stupid unless you already know the answer. Don't come here with no stupid question while we playing this, this, and that. If it ain't for you, you already know, keep it pushing. Go click into your Disney damn um Apple. Go click into some other damn app and go watch the shit i don't know you know what i'm saying stay stay lower density okay you dig but we on something bigger thank you for all those that are helping me y'all thank you for all of you who are helping me you know who you are i love y'all though that's it that's it i love y'all we're going far i'm not look i get to talking and i stop putting up the all my the mod salute all y'all all those who tisha 1901 I'll be wanting to say all y'all names anytime y'all come miss uh but I don't want to butcher y'all names so I'll be putting it you know that's why I, I, I don't really say the names I just put the names you know what I'm saying <laughs> anyway you know the late Donda Dr. Donda West always taught me though that your words mean more than what the fuck comes out your mouth I mean she didn't say that she didn't say that expletive but she definitely said your words mean more than what you could ever say out of your mouth in other words you know what you write you know, the words that you put on paper, it means so much more. And what you write is so much more than anything that falls out of your mouth. And one time late Do Dr. Donda West also told me that, you know, um, your words are going to take you far. She told that to me. She said my words. She said I'm, I was an impeccable writer and whatnot. Like I said, I'm a better writer than I am a speaker, but that is what it is. And so um, I realized what she was saying, too, is she said that, you know, anybody can talk. You know, you they talk and they won't even listen. Everybody has, you know, everybody. But if you put it in a book, you put those words in a book, it's it's different than just even letting it fall out your mouth. You know, something you go talking and people just think you running off at the mouth. You put it in a book, they'll 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 classify you as a world renowned author. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay, you can't get what I'm, um, you can't pick up what we putting down this class. This may not be for you, which is okay. But if you want to learn, we're willing to teach. Thank y'all. Love you guys. Happy win. Yay. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe.